friends and family, boys and girls, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about why I would not make the decision to become a medical assistant again. And I know you probably read that title and was like, what? What is she talking about? Um, and I do want to say that this is not a medical assistant hate video at all by any means. I liked my time as a medical assistant for sure. I really enjoyed it. I think it gave me experience that I definitely would not have gotten otherwise. Also, I got a lot of experience during COVID, which really, 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 really helped me. And I am not saying there's anything wrong with being a medical assistant at all. So I wanna throw that disclaimer in here really fast, right in the beginning of the video, so nobody misunderstands what I'm saying. Um, but what I will say is that, you know, there are some things that I probably would have done differently. And if you are a pre-professional student, like you want to go be a PA or you want to go be a doctor and you need experience doing something, um, then I do think this will be a great video for you to watch uh, so you can figure out how you're going to get that experience moving forward. So let's go ahead and get right into the video, you guys. So you guys know, um, I graduated from the University of Kentucky in 2021. Oh my God, I started college five. Um, 2021 is when I graduated and I probably in the last two years I want to say I got my medical assistant certification my junior year at the end of my junior year so I was a medical assistant from then up until I after I graduated so up until the summer of my after my senior year the summer after I graduated I don't know why it was so hard for me to get that out but yeah and <clears throat> you know it was kind of like the peak of COVID, so I was doing a lot of like COVID things. I was giving COVID shots, you know, things like that, because we were trying to get through the pandemic and get over it. Um, and it was really, really great experience. But you guys, I'm not gonna be shy about saying, medical assistants don't get paid a whole lot of money. Like it is a very entry level position in healthcare. And while I do think it is some good experience, I just knew it wasn't gonna be something that I was gonna be able to do after I left college because, you know, after you leave college, there are real expenses. You have to be a real adult out here in these streets. <laughs> like it gets really real, really fast. And you know, as much as I did enjoy being a medical assistant, you know, at the end of the day, the bills have to be paid. So that definitely factored into my decision on why I kind of like strayed away from medical assisting and went more into using my degree after I graduated. And another thing too about medical assisting, there isn't really a lot of room for, um, I guess you could say growth. When you're a medical assistant, that's kind of like it. You don't have, there aren't any bridge programs where your experience as a medical assistant will kind of like count towards something else. Like there's not really anything like that. So, you know, you kind of get stuck in this entry level position where there isn't really a whole lot of room for growth, right? Like there isn't like a medical assistant 2.0, typically I haven't seen like a medical assistant 2.0 that you can upgrade to after you've been a medical assistant for so long. So, you know, you kind of just get stuck in the, in the entry level position, unless you go back to school and, you know, go get your bachelor's and go get your master's, become a PA or become a nurse or whatever the case may be. Other than that, there's really no, not a whole lot of growth situation happening there. So I say those two things kind of pulled me away from medical assisting the pay and the fact that there wasn't really a whole lot of room for growth. Of course, with more experience comes more money and I do know that, but typically with those positions, you do have to be working for quite a long time before you start seeing some money that will sustain my lifestyle. I'll speak for me before I would start seeing money that would be able to sustain my lifestyle. This is what I would do instead of medical assisting. I'm gonna go ahead and get right into the point because I do think that if I could go back and do it all over again or if I needed you know, some experience for a pre-professional program for healthcare, this is probably what I would do. I would definitely more so look into becoming a surgical technologist. Now, this will probably require a little bit more time, but just hear me out. The reward on the other end I believe is a little bit better than the reward of being a medical assistant. So first, what even is a surgical tech? So a surgical tech obviously works in surgery. They're gonna be the person in surgery that maintains the sterile field. They're gonna set up, help set up the operating room typically. Um, they may pass instruments to the surgeon. You know, they do things like that, kind of just to help make the surgeon and the first assist job easier. That's kind of what their job is. Is this an entry level kind of position? I would probably call it an entry level position. But the great thing about being a surgical tech is that even though it is an entry level position, you can take that experience and bridge into something different. 
right? You can branch into something different. And before I go on to say this, I will say I would do this because I have always had kind of like a little interest in surgery. I do like working with my hands and I don't have any problems standing up for a long period of time. If you have an issue with any of those things, then probably will not recommend this to you. But for me and kind of like what I was interested in back then, I feel like this would have better suited me at that time so to become a surgical tech typically it is a two-year program but if you do have a bachelor's degree i believe some programs will let you bypass uh, some of those general entry-level classes like if you've already taken anatomy and physiology psychology things like that then you might can get some time taken off of your two-year um, two-year program and you can shorten it because you've already had those basic classes in the beginning and then you might be able to even jump right into the surgical tech classes and finish in a year or less than a year so definitely look into that with any program that you're doing after you finish your surgical tech program I definitely would say get some experience as a surgical tech a lot of programs are going to require that you get experience before you even graduate so you shouldn't have an issue with that at all um, but definitely work in it for just a little bit and you know get your footing make sure you know what you're doing after that you know if you feel comfortable and you feel like you want to go to the next step the thing that I really love about being a surgical tech is that you then have the opportunity to go back to school and to bridge from surgical tech to surgical first assistant and surgical first assistant is definitely a role that is going to take a lot more work a lot more kind of like attention to detail because you are the surgeon's second set of hands so as opposed to as a surgical tech you were just kind of passing instruments and setting up the sterile field now you're actually working with the surgeon and you know you're doing kind of like the small procedures on the side that you know he probably can't get to right at that moment might be more involved in post-op and pre-op you know you just have a way more serious role in the operating room than you would probably as a surgical tech and there is a really great youtuber who actually is a surgical first assist that you definitely should go check out I'm gonna see if I can find his video and then link it down below but if you want to know more about like kind of like the job I would definitely go and watch his video because he is awesome of course with more responsibility with more education because you would be getting more education and you will be taking on a way more active role in the operating room of course that comes more money so when you bridge and become a surgical first assistant you jump pretty pretty good in the pay chart so I would deem I'm not gonna say for anybody else but I would deem these salaries as way more um, probably like livable than a medical assistant salary they are getting paid starting off a lot more than what a medical assistant would get paid and I I would even argue to say that this salary is something that I would say you could even live off of like if you wanted to just become a surgical first assistant and then like let that be it you're done you throwing it in the towel don't want to go back to school I even think that this would be a great career to go into and stay in a lot of people that I've talked to who are surgical first assist love their job they love their job and they wouldn't do anything else it kind of is like the hidden gem of healthcare professions because a lot of us assume that in order to be a first assist in the OR you have to be um, either a nurse first assist or a PA and you know that is just not the case and of course I didn't know this until I did more research on it and now that I know this I definitely want to give the information to you guys but this is an opportunity for someone who maybe doesn't want to be a nurse or doesn't want to be a PA or does want to be those things and just wants to get some real true experience before they go into those things you know this is a great opportunity for you and the greatest thing about it too is that you know if you are in college and you are working towards a professional program this is you know a credential that even after college you know if you decide to take a gap year or something like that is going to be making you enough money to where you don't have to um, work two jobs you don't have to leave your job getting you experience because it's not making you enough money like this is a job where you know it can be your job while you're working towards your professional program and I think that's what I really love about it because it is hard it is really hard to be a professional student and you know they're telling you, you have to have all this experience you have to be doing this and doing that and doing this and you know it's just like you know 
I want to get that experience, but I have to live too, you know what I'm saying? So this is definitely a great opportunity if you like working with your hands or if you already, you know, feel like you might have kind of like a calling towards surgery, then I definitely think that this is a great opportunity for you. Like, I think you should definitely look into this. You can look up how much surgical first assistance make in your state. I will link down below a link that tells how much surgical first assistance make in Texas because that's currently where I'm located. But of course you guys can do your own research for your own state and then go from there. But you guys, I really think that this is a great opportunity. And I was like, I have to tell my subscribers about this because this is some really good valuable information that I did not have in college. Like I did not know that surgical techs could bridge and do this. Let me know what you thought of this video. Go ahead and hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Even comment down below if you're thinking about going into this. Whatever you think about this entry level position and you know how it can bridge into something different, just leave me whatever you feel. Just, you know, let me know how y'all feel in the comments down below. And of course, look around on my channel. If you like what you see from me, then of course, I would love to have you. Go ahead and subscribe. XOXO, Anaya Nishé. Oh. Hi, can mommy shoot this video? Yeah, no. Okay, well you lay right there. <laughs>